So I was able to pick up a system that has Intel's latest DG1 graphics card and it's sitting pretty right there. And I was so excited. I waited weeks for it to ship, finally got it in. I've been talking about this over on the Hot News channel when we found out that Best Buy was gonna be selling this. It got me pumped because I wanted to see what the third entry into the GPU market was gonna be like. We've had AMD and Nvidia sitting over here for too long and now it's time for Intel to come in and shake things up. So could the DG1 do that for me? It shook me to my very core, that's for sure. I hated every single second that I spent testing this GPU, and oh man, I have to talk about this DG1 just as much as I have to talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Datacamp. My friends, I know you're tech enthusiasts, and that's why I'm excited to talk to you about Datacamp, because they're an online learning platform that makes it easy to build data skills. You can learn at your own pace with interactive courses and hands-on exercises. You don't need any previous data skills to get started. Datacamp has courses for all different skill levels, from data fundamentals and data visualization, to data science coding courses in Python, and SQL. Whether you want to pursue a career in becoming a data analyst or a data scientist, or you want to take a course like I do in machine learning fundamentals, you can absolutely do that. They also have things like finance fundamentals and applied finance that you can check out. And it's easy, you just learn directly from your own browser and DataCamp doesn't require any extra software. There's 350 plus courses designed by top experts currently working in the industry to develop the skills you need today. You can take a free assessment which gives you personalized learning recommendations for you to grow your data skills. So you can advance your professional career, build new skills, and invest in yourself, you use the link in the video description. All first chapters of DataCamp's courses are free, so check them out at the link in the video description. So this pre-built from Best Buy is a CyberPower PC. It has an Intel 11400F CPU, which is six cores and 12 threads. It also comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty pathetic considering it's a single stick, it's not dual channel, it's, it's just kind of lame overall. And then it's on this Asus B560 motherboard. The total cost of the pre-built sits at $750. You can buy this at Best Buy right now, but I beg you, for the love of Jiminy Christmas, don't touch it. This is not ready for you to have, okay? Especially if you're planning on doing any sort of gaming on this system. I'm not gonna be talking about productivity, how it performs in Premiere Pro, or anything else that people use for day-to-day -day tasks. This is simply me checking out what the gaming performance was like on the DG1 and it was a nightmare. So to start off, I'll mention that I did upgrade the RAM in the system from the crappy eight gigabytes that came with it to 32 gigabytes to make sure that there was no bottleneck going on there. I don't have a higher end Intel chip that I could put in the system, but the 11400S likely isn't going to bottleneck the DG1 considering just how bad it actually is. And I'm not saying it's bad because it gives you low performance. In fact, the past several videos here on UFD Tech have been about AMD's APUs, the 5600G and the 5700G, which I both absolutely love, especially for the price to performance that you're getting. I'm not a snob who's gonna turn up my nose to things that can only run at 720p low, which is where you should be aiming with this DG1. But it actually, it's the overall experience that I have with the DG1 that gives me no confidence that a regular consumer is gonna be able to go out, buy this pre-built from Best Buy, and then have a smooth experience at home. Ultimately, what it came down to is that DX12 games don't run smoothly on the DG1. Intel says that it officially supports DirectX 12, but I couldn't get this card to perform well in most of my DX12 games that I use for testing. That was after I completely reset Windows. That was after I completely reloaded the drivers. That was after I tested Intel's latest beta drivers to see if that might make things better. That was after I rolled back drivers to a previous Intel version. That's after I tried reinstalling games to see if things would be okay there that was after I tried to make sure it wasn't the RAM and put the eight gigabytes back in there instead of the 32 gigs that I had. So let me go through a list of the problems that I actually had with this card. For starters, Horizon Zero Dawn, when you launch the game, it doesn't show you anything besides this red rectangle that's right there. However, I do know that it actually runs because the frame rate counter is going. And when I ran the integrated benchmark that's in the game, I got a result. 
of roughly 40 FPS at 720p low. So it's working, it's just not showing anything. And I would have just chalked that up to the game being broken if it weren't for the fact that Death Stranding crashed every single time I tried to load it into the game. Devil May Cry 5 crashed as well. Metro Exodus completely crashed. Cyberpunk couldn't run for more than three seconds. Assassin's Creed Valhalla actually did run, but faded to this weird RGB flashing and then came back to normal and then did a dip to white RGB flashing again. And then with the games that have both DX11 and DX12 versions like Borderlands 3 runs totally smooth with Borderlands 3, but as soon as you switch to DX12, it crashes. It was an absolute nightmare to actually get consistent runs with this card at all. I tried all of the troubleshooting steps that I could. However, one of the tricky things with Intel's graphics card is that you're not allowed to put it in a different system. It actually just doesn't boot. You will get no display output whatsoever. So I can't even troubleshoot to see if it's the GPU on another system because it's bound to the motherboard. So I can't actually clarify what the issue is because my troubleshooting can't go beyond just testing it with the system at hand. However, I can confirm it's not the rest of the system because as soon as I took the DG1 out and put in my RX 550, everything ran flawlessly, had no crashing whatsoever. Everything was good. I've tried all of the troubleshooting that I possibly could and I could not get Intel's GPU to run properly for most of the testing that I did. Now that's not to say it doesn't run on games. There's plenty of benchmarks that I'm going to get to in just a second to show you how it actually performs. Spoiler, not great. But the point is that it was overall an actually really rough process right out of the box. And I have the fortunate ability to try different RAM. I was able to swap out the GPU to test it. I was able to reload Windows. I was able to reload the drivers. I was able to reset the everything that's about the system. And a normal gamer probably doesn't want to have to go through all of that. And that just frankly sucks. Intel seems to have a lot of work to do on their driver's end because for me, it was frankly a nightmare. But to be honest, if the DG1 blew away my expectations of what I would want in a $750 pre-built, I probably wouldn't be complaining as much as I am because just troubleshooting the system is par for the course with being a tech YouTuber. But that's not the case. Let's go ahead and talk about the numbers. Everything that I tested the DG1 on was at 720p low so that I could compare it with Andy's latest APUs, the 5600G and the 5700G, which are supposed to release in just over a month. And boy, howdy, my friends, this was a terrible, terrible time of benchmarking. So I'm only gonna read you the numbers of the games that I was actually able to get a successful benchmark run in on. So let's start off with Red Dead Redemption 2. The DG1 ran at 46.2 FPS, which the 5700G was 8% faster in. Fortnite at DX11, I got 110 FPS, whereas the 5700G got 165, which is roughly 50% faster. For what I could benchmark of Devil May Cry 5, I got 59 FPS average, of which the 5700G was 51% faster. Valorant ran at 186 FPS, which the 5700G was 15% faster than that. Death Stranding ran at 37.3 FPS, but the 5700G was 73% faster. And for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we hit 55 FPS, but AMD's APU was 40% faster. GTA 5, I got 122 FPS. The 5700G was 15% faster. COD Warzone ran at 33.6 FPS. The 5700G was 112% faster. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for the, what part of the benchmark I could actually run, was just under 30 FPS, with the 5700G being 80% faster. And Borderlands 3 and DX11, I got 57.2 FPS, whereas the 5700G was 34% faster. I tested a couple new games that I'm introducing into my benchmarking suite. Control, which I got 54 FPS, and Resident Evil Village, I got 27.1 FPS. Again, all at 720p low. I didn't test those on the 5700G, so I don't have actual comparisons. But in summation, it's kind of bad. There was only two games that the 5700G actually lost to the DG1, and that was in Crisis Remaster, since the DG1 got 77.5 FPS, and then The Witcher 3, the DG1 managed 70.8 FPS, which was 12% faster than the 5700G. So overall, this integrated GPU on a dedicated card is far worse than what 
you can get from AMD's latest APU lineup, which isn't actually being released to consumers just yet. You can't buy the 5700G until August 5th. However, you can buy it in a pre-built, just like I did, from Office Depot for what I picked it up for, which is $550. So I got a much better gaming experience for $200 less thanks to AMD. However, currently the price of the 5700G pre-built is sitting right around $670, but you save about $100. Now you do miss out on the RGB aesthetics that are going on here, but for $100, you could upgrade the case in the RGB to make it a much better experience than the HP pre-built that you'll get from Office Depot. But I have to say, I, I'm just, I guess I'm looking forward to what Intel comes out with later because this was an absolute crap show. I've read reports that Intel's driver system systems aren't working very well when it comes to their graphics cards. There's been several other videos made by other tech YouTubers who have reported problems when it comes to running things on Intel's latest XE graphics, especially stuff that's integrated. I ran into some massive problems and it makes me not want to touch this system ever again. The fact that I can't reliably play games on it and I have to figure out, is this a DX11 game? Is it a DX12 game? Is it actually gonna run? That's really frustrating, especially since a lot of games are coming out that are still going to be DX12. But not all DX12s actually gave me an issue. Control ran perfectly fine, perfectly smoothly with no issue. So it was really just a crapshoot whether or not the DG1 actually wanted to perform when I wanted to play video games. So overall, this system is an absolute do not buy from me. Even if you don't have the driver issues that I had with this system, you're still not going to be getting the performance that you can otherwise get from a cheaper price from AMD. I've never once encountered these types of drivers issues from Nvidia or AMD in the past, which makes me really skittish about what Intel's going to be doing developing their cards going forward. Hopefully they take this into account. Hopefully they put a lot of work into to the software side and don't just release a hardware product that has no support whatsoever. I'm glad I was able to test the DG1. It's neat to see a third party being entered into the arena. I just don't think that they're quite ready yet to be worth your consideration as a consumer. Save the 750 bucks, buy an APU from AMD instead. Let me know if there's anything else that you want me to test the DG1 with, whether it be productivity or otherwise, I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And in case you wanna check out my 5700G review, you can check it out right over there and you can get subscribed because we're gonna have a 5700G versus 5800X showdown coming out shortly here on the channel. And I'll see you in the next video, friends. Cheers. Cheers.